Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Little Green Pasture. Praise the Lord. Are you praising the Lord today? I'm praising him. For every day is a good day to praise the Lord. And today, I pray that you will join me in that praise. So, I'm going to get started because I feel full. You know, I've been gone for about four days. This seems like a long time for me. And maybe not to you, but for me, I don't like to be away from this little green pasture where the chief shepherd dwells. So without any further ado, I'm going to pray. Dear Father in heaven, I praise the name of Jesus Christ in this place. I extol the Lord Jesus Christ. For you are the King of Kings. And you are the Lord of Lords, and it is you that we fall down in worship. You said all nations shall serve you. All nations shall bow down before you. And all kings shall come into the brightness of your presence. Oh, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for you are seated on a glorious throne, a magnificent throne. And the word says, today I was reading, Lord, and where it said, oh, how great is thy beauty and how great is thy goodness, oh God. And Lord, we look to you, to the brightness of your beauty. Shine down upon us. Speak to those, Lord, feed them, oh, chief shepherd, that are thirsty, that are hungry. And them, Lord, that are coming at your at your word where you said come unto me isn't that your word continually come come and see come believe come and dine taste and see praise the lord now lord i pray let this let these this these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For Jesus' sake. Amen. So, this morning, like after days when John is home, we get busy doing things. I'm at my, seeing my mom and visiting and things. And, and when I come back, it's like, I just am so hungry myself and thirsty after so much activity and which is good activity it was all positive but I just woke up this morning and I went right out there and I was like Lord Lord I come to you Lord speak to me speak to my heart Lord show me what is on your heart Lord show me what you want me to teach I sit at your feet and Lord open up a well within me and and i went on praying and as then when i was done as i was getting ready to um open my bible uh i do have a little bit of a practice that i do is that before i completely end like i will say amen but then i'll look and see if anybody has contacted me that needs prayer so i can go back into prayer without going into that next segment of my devotions and I saw a friend of mine who said uh, she was talking about a woman who she took care of and who had recently died a couple of weeks ago. And this woman, my friend, she's call her sis, and she's in her mid 80s. And she said that she was somewhere last night and she had met with the woman who had passed away named Pat. And she met up with Pat's niece and found out that she had been born again. And she said, Pat prayed for years for her to be saved. And I sat there and I just felt such the presence of the Lord. And I, for some reason, I just, I, I wanted to look up something and I looked up answers to prayer after the death of someone. I, something like that and and I saw all these different 
things that people were writing about how certain loved ones that they knew had prayed their whole life for a family member or extended family or friends that after that person passed away, that later on, all those people came to the Lord. And I knew that my the Lord was moving in me because I felt my heart welling up. And I knew this was something that Jesus wants me to talk to you about today. I read about a story of where Spurgeon spoke about a man that had five sons. And all of them were drunkards and carousers. And the man prayed his whole life that his sons would be saved. And on his deathbed, he had, was speaking to someone nearby, saying that he was lamenting that he had prayed all his year, all their lives, all his life, of all their lives during his life for their salvation. And they were, in a sense, none the better, but only grew worse. And, and he was sad going into his death. And but when his children came around his bed, all five of those boys, he spoke to them about how in his lifetime he had prayed for each one of those sons. And shortly thereafter, he went home to be with the Lord. Spurgeon spoke about all five of those sons, said that because of those words of their father, hearing that their dad had prayed for them all those years it touched their heart to the point that all all those sons received jesus christ and are and became born again and i believe are reunited with their father in heaven today and i started to think about that scripture that has meant so much to me so many years of my life which is john 17 20 and it's something that just has always spoken to my heart about something future. And it says, neither I pray for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. And so when he says, which shall believe, it's as if the Lord is summoning the future into the present. He speaks of having once for all sent them his apostles and he sees rising before his eyes the multitude in all ages who would believe their testimony as if already doing so the future body of believers is regarded by anticipation as already in existence the future of believers is conceived as actually existing and i got that from a couple of couple of quotes I accumulated together from a couple of my uh, favorite scholars. And it meant so much to me because what I was understanding in this word is that, you see, we're trying so hard to see our loved ones saved, our friends saved as we see the day approaching. And so we get so downhearted and we feel we're getting older. And there's a weariness to the flesh, right? That's what it says. Uh, but it says that about much study. But really, if you do too much, that you think you're, you, you know, you. I think is that we take a lot on ourselves, right? Because we want them to be saved so badly. We want them to go to heaven because tomorrow is not promised to anybody. And we want to make sure that all those that Jesus puts in our path, whether it's our children, our spouses, our neighbors, our friends, or even somebody you don't even know and you see in the world somewhere every day, but that there's something that's moving you in your heart to pray for them. Jesus prayed this prayer over 2000 years ago that he says, I don't pray for these alone. As he was praying for his disciples, he's saying, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. And when that word went out, that gospel of salvation, by his apostles it was an eternal stream that went out into all the world and it's still flowing full because the river of god is full of water 
And I know I have the Lord's, our Father's heart in this when I say that I believe the Lord is speaking to you today through this little vessel. And I'm doing the best that I can. Because you know when you hear something in the spirit, it's rather difficult to put it in pieces. But I know, the, I pray the Lord gives you understanding and that the Lord open up your hearts. The Lord open up a door of faith in your hearts to receive the fact that he sees you and he hears all of your prayers and he knows you. But he wants you to be encouraged that he prayed for them already. And that that word that's going out is the gospel word, but it began in this prayer. And in this little green pasture, I call it, I know many of you don't know this, but I used to just refer to it as a channel. Because I used to always see myself in the very beginning, I was so timid with everything and overly careful. And in prayer, I would picture myself holding it a handful of dirt and I would say Lord thank you for this little handful of dirt that you've given me and a couple three months later as I prayed that I heard the voice of the Lord speak in my heart saying to me it's no longer a handful of dirt I've given you a little green pasture and in this world of fancy sounding names and catchy names and clever names Something so simple as a little green pasture denotes a place where the sheep come to lie down. And, you know, just a little note, you know, when Jesus says, when David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And the next verse is, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. The only time sheep will lay down in a green pasture is when they're fully fed. When they're fully fed fed they then lay down and they rest and there's so much frenetic energy with trying to pray trying to pray trying to pray when the lord has prayed it, this this prayer this prayer is an eternal intercession for christ from christ to you through every generation passed down through you as you're reading the word as you're studying to show yourself approved on to the Lord and doing so many things in the Lord. But in this little green pasture, I'm always going to overemphasize prayer. Prayer is the greatest thing you are ever going to do. It is the most powerful thing that God has entrusted with us as believers. That he has allowed us to come before his throne and to pray with whole body full-hearted, you know, with everything in us, believing on the Lord. Yes, this prayer is eternal intercession for Jesus, from Jesus Christ, for your children. You know, over the last couple of years, I've had many, many parents writing to me and telling me terrible things about their children. Some of them are homeless. Some of them are strung out on drugs. Some of them are old in their age and don't have any show of care that they want to ever be saved. But today I felt such a power in the Lord to overemphasize prayer to you where Jesus is saying, come to me. Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest for your souls. I've prayed the prayer. I have set that word in motion. That word that Christ set in motion is as powerful as that moment that he prayed that to his father and is in power today. You know, there was a time in my life where I was praying for one of my children. And I was so exhausted and I was praying away and praying away and pacing during the night and going back and forth. And I was doing this for a long time. I mean, for like years and I just felt weak, you know, and I was like, Lord, I just feel so weak in my prayers. 
but I know in my heart, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop because it was more than just for salvation. I was praying for everything, for his care, for everything. And my, and I noticed the more pain I felt, the greater the prayer became. I noticed the further away he seemed to go, the closer I drew to Christ. The greater the pain, the greater the prayer. The hotter the emotion, the more power it launched me into the presence of the Lord. It began to work a deeper work in me. Don't turn away in sadness. Use that sadness. Let that sadness be an escort for you to the throne of Jesus Christ who answers prayer. And don't let the enemy speak to you and say, well, you know, some people will, won't come to the Lord. Well, you know, it, you know, it's been this long. That's a voice of a liar. That is the voice of Satan. Do not listen to his voice. Listen to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ spoke these words 2,000 years ago. Neither pray, pray I for these alone, but for them. Who are the them? It's your children. He prayed for your children. And you don't think the Father in heaven is going to honor the prayer of his son. And you who have been purchased with the precious blood of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You see, don't be afraid of your pain. And don't be afraid of longevity. In fact, never give up. I have found that the greater exhaustion I felt and the weaker I felt, the more that the power of God was realized in my prayers. And I understood that the prayer began with a pain in my heart. And then it began to take over my soul and my mind and my emotions. And it went down deeper into my spirit, man, until my soul, my entire sanctified spirit, soul, and body showed up like one man. I was, I was like a complete whole. I was the prayer. And I came before him. You know, the other morning as I was waiting in prayer on the Lord. And in that moment of that holy, silent pause, I heard very softly within that still small voice say to me, you are a pleasing aroma, like incense. And I never, ever heard anything like that. Because I never think myself like that. Oh, yes, I know what Second Corinthians chapter 2 says about us being an aroma of life unto life and into others, death unto death. But God was speaking to my heart about the, my aroma, what was coming out of me. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You know... When he said that to me, I just paused and I realized that all these prayers that I, I pray, and I don't say that, I'm nothing, trust me, I know what I'm not, but I know who he is. I want to share something with you. One of my favorite um, chapters as I'm getting older is Psalm 71. And I want to touch on a couple of scriptures, okay? It says here, I'm going to start in verse 5. For thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. So. This is his prayer in support of his old age. And this was a praying man. He wasn't in the priesthood, but he was a praying man. And so when he said this, he's saying, look, from my womb, I know God called me. From my mother's womb, you've been my trust from my youth. And my praise 
shall be continually of thee. And he's saying this not as a young man, but as an old man. Because he's experienced the deliverance power and the love of God. He goes down further. He says, Oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth. And that's verse 17 and 18. I'm going to read. Oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now, he's saying, now. And I love that word. I've been focusing on that word now in my Bible for the last few days. When it says now, it means now, right now, right here, not tomorrow, not a week from now after you finished reading a book you just got online. Not when you've, I'm talking now. I'm talking about now faith, not a future faith, but a now faith that what God said in the past, he will complete in them, which he said, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. He says, now also when I'm old and gray headed, O God, forsake me not until I have showed thy strength into this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. And something happens when there's a buildup in prayer. There is something that happens that is, I can, I can describe it like this because I'm older now. Have you ever done something? Have you ever gone somewhere or driven somewhere? And you're like, you know what? We're this far. There's no way I'm turning back. Not after everything that it took me to get here. See, there's something individual. There's something powerful. There's something um, that is building up in power and in strength. And your prayers are not the same as they were of 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago. There's something as long as those that you love are unsaved and all those prayers that you're praying up, there is a building up of power within you by the Holy Spirit. Because you see, every word of God is true. He's a shield unto those who put their trust in him. And it says, the Lord is not a man that he should repent. He's not a man that he says something and then takes it back. Once the Lord prayed that prayer, that thing is immune to destruction. That thing is as more powerful and more sure and more true in you and in me because Jesus already prayed that prayer and we enter into that prayer. It even says about works, Jesus says, um, other men labored, but ye are entered into their labors. And so that prayer, the apostles entered into that prayer. And then after them, other apostles and disciples enter that prayer. And so we have now, after all these 2,000 years, we enter in to that prayer. And we stand fast and sure and firm in the name of Jesus Christ. The name where there's no other name that a man could be saved, that sure name. And, you know, I remember years ago, or maybe it wasn't even that long. But I wrote this down as I was receiving of the Lord. And I wrote this in my Bible as I was being moved by the Spirit. And I'm going to read it to you. And this is after I had read Psalm 71, verse 18. I'll read it again. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not until I have showed thy strength into this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. And I just felt such this powerful move by the Holy Spirit. And I began to write like it was coming out, like pouring out like the sweetest waters to the thirstiest soul. And I wrote, when we lose strength in old age, it is then we go in the strength of the Lord. We go on in our old age to show his strength to the young. His strength is made perfect in weakness. When I'm weak, then he is strong. And the power of God resteth upon me. Ultimately, God is not interested in our strength or supposed righteousness. It all must die out in our bodies of death. God trains, he exercises, he conditions, he corrects, 
and educates us out of ourselves. Then when we have no more strength, then he shines forth from within. Then his power is strength. His righteousness becomes our own. Then he increases our greatness and strengthens us on every side in him and comforts us on and comforts us. Then we are re relieved and released from the strength and power of our flesh and of the presumptuousness that we are able to rest all on Christ. And I, it's uh, maybe a little bit of a typo here, but I will restructure it. It says, then we are able to rest all on Christ and in Christ who is our life eternal. So what I was trying to get at, what I was trying to say is that when we get older, we realize that there has been a growth. There has been something that died off. There has been a new life building up inside of us. And so it's not just a prayer as a thing. You understand? It's the prayer that's in Christ Jesus, that's in us by his Holy Spirit, by his life. So when we are realizing that that prayer that Jesus spoke, that prayer is moving in our lives as we are carrying our crosses daily. I hope I'm making sense to you. And that our prayers, I, I have found that our prayers become more robust. Uh, my prayers became, there was a strength and there's a strength in my prayers that I have now that I never saw before. That I could even hear the sound of the Lord in those prayers, if that makes sense. Like as I'm praying, there's a witness to that power. And I'm praying with my whole man, not just pieces of me here and pieces of me there, but I'm coming strong before the Lord, my spirit, my soul, and my body before the presence of the Lord. And so when I say, Lord, I am believing in you, I believe in you now. And like I was saying earlier, when I was wrestling for my son and I was praying and I was praying and I was praying. He said to me, faith is like wings. It lifts you up above everything to me. And then I said, Lord, I feel like I'm just so weak. I'm just so weak. I said, I, I need your help. Because the more I pray, the worse it gets. And he said, don't look at him. Don't look at anything. You look to me. And you know what word has really been sticking out in my mind these days? When Jesus went into the synagogue after he was tempted of the devil for 40 days, 40 nights. And it says that when he went into the temple, it says, um, it says for he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue and he stood up for to read. And there was given unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And he read, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to preach deliverance to the captives and get recovery of sight to the blind and so on. He goes through all the things, those five things that he said God sent me to do, his father. And he said, and when he was finished, he closed the book and he handed it again to the minister. And he said unto all of them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And that scripture is fulfilled today in your ears that he has prayed for those that you're wanting to come into the kingdom. You know what else? That's, you know, here's what he said that has stuck with me lately. And the eyes of all of them in the synagogue were fastened on him. I pray that that great awe and that wonder of Jesus Christ come to you by the spirit of revelation. 
that that awe and that wonder <clears throat> break through the spirit of this world that's always captivating everybody's attention. Praying for your family. You know, when people see you all your life pray and they know you're a praying woman and they know you're a praying man, they may make fun of you. They'll scoff at you. They'll mock at you. Even members of your own household become your worst enemy. But a true servant of the Lord, a true born again life says, I'm going forward. I'm going forward. And they take all that heaviness and all of that pain and it moves them to move the Lord. See, it's when you're moved in pain and you're moved in the suffering and you're moved. Prayer takes deep, deep roots. Like David said, out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O God. O God, hear my voice. Think about that. Out of the depths, I've cried unto you. And it seems like out of all the depths that I've been in, those most desperate prayers are the ones that God answered. God answers desperate prayers. You know, we know that Charles Stanley passed away a few days ago. And when I saw it, I, I was actually thinking about him a couple days ago. And I thought, oh, yeah. Charles Stanley, he's getting to that place. And then I heard he passed away a couple of few days later. And I just thought about, and they said that he had passed away peacefully in his home, which tells me he went to bed one night and he laid down to sleep. And he awoke in heaven because he finished the work God gave him to do. Jesus authored his work and Jesus finished it. God fulfilled all the number of his days. I thought of all the years and I was running for my life and I was young and I was all over the place all my life since I was a young teenage girl. I would think like 16 years old. Every now and then I, he'd be on TV and it was like I gained strength from something he said. And I've been watching him ever since here and there. And I saw something that his son posted today. And he posted pictures of him and his dad camping like from the 60s. And, and all these final pictures of our beautiful brother, Charles Stanley, that we love so much. And he wrote these words, Andy Stanley, his son. It said, these final few weeks with my dad have been very precious beyond words. At the end of every visit, he asked me to pray for him, which of course I did on my knees beside the big leather chair he was confined to for the past several months. But as I was leaving his house this past Saturday night, he asked if he could pray for me as if he knew. Then as was his habit, he said, I couldn't be prouder of you, Andy. The source of a word determines its weight. Those words were wonderfully weighty words and his final words to me. I'll miss him every day until I see him again. Charles Stanley was a praying man. And when I thought about how he sat on that leather chair, he was confined to it for the past several months. He was waiting for the Lord and he was a peace at peace because it says mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace and now the torch is passed to you and to me and the Lord wants you to pray he wants you to pray believing believing blessed is the man who puts his trust in the Lord Jesus says, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their name. And finally, lastly, George Mueller. I love this story. When George Mueller was in his 90s, it was his last interview. 
And this man from a newspaper was asking him about all these questions. And one of the questions he asked him was, is there anybody, is there any prayer that you have prayed that God has not answered? He said, well, there is one. The man said, well, what is it? He said, well, I've been praying for 25, I've been praying for years. I don't remember how many years he said. I think he said 25 years for one of his dearest friend's sons. And the man said, said, well, okay, you're pretty much close to the point of, you know, you're, you're going to pass away soon. And God hasn't answered that prayer yet. And he said, do you think he will? And he said, yes. He said, why? He said, because I asked him. Because I asked him. This world is so noisy. People running to conferences, buying so many books. But God just wants you to get quiet with him. And he wants to speak to you quietly. And he spoke to me at my heart today. And you know what he did? He assured me that he will save my own children. I never experienced anything like it. And he'll save yours and all those that you love. Keep your eyes fastened on him. And remember, never forget, prayers are deathless. <laughs>